Okay, panelists, thanks for coming. You're welcome. It took me a little while to organise this, as you know. People are busy, people are doing their thing. But I'm just going to do, um, apologies for, run, for running late, first, first, first and foremost, it's meant to start at 12. But as you know, when you're organising these things, things, things happen. But I really appreciate everyone for turning up for this event. Um, as you, some of you may know, um, my name's Nana. I'm the founder and, and director of Access UK organisation I set up about 2013 off the back of the London riots and Axis was set up primarily to deal or to address black youth unemployment and um, you know, to provide more bespoke services to, to counter you know, the gang issue, huge unemployment, all, all the other stuff that we face in our community. We started off with my own money, I put my own money into it, uh, funded it for over a year done some great work and off the back of that we were commissioned by various other organisations and government agencies to, to help young black people in particular and people from marginalised communities into work, uh, training, further education and so forth. Now this is a sub the subject we're talking on today is something that's very close to me because I'm a big rap fan myself, I've been a rap fan for many years since I was in primary school um, but I keep on hearing this issue all the time about the influence of rap music, the negative influence of rap music. So I thought I'd call together all these great artists, great people, big man himself, Leo, uh, to come and speak on the subject today. To see if there is a correlation between the music and what's going out on the streets. And also to identify some solutions to, to, that we can offer our young, our young people, um, you know, so see we can, we can do something. So this will be but one, one of many discussions that we have on the issue. And um, just to quickly introduce everybody, I'm sure you know them already, but I've got my man Skendo here. Yeah. You, Papa. My boy, big boy Scraps. <laughs> as always, as always. Oops. We've got Raspect. That's one, Papa. And then we've got Baba Leo, Baba Leo Mohammed. And then Mr. RTM himself, Young Spray. That's it, that's it. And we got AM from 410. Sure, so, we got AM. Is that it? I'm sure it's AM and AM. Boy, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's his MO, isn't it? That's, that's his MO. So, yeah, we just, yeah, we're hoping to get the debate started because we're running out, we're, you know, we're running against time. And, um, but what we're going to start off with is a video which is by Dr. Yuma Johnson, who's speaking on this subject. So we're going to kick it off with that, and then we're going to, we're going to start the discussions. And after the discussions, we're going to have a quick, uh, a quick Q&A session. Say, he said Raspberry, but Raspberry. 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 So yeah, we're going to do, we're going to do the Umar Johnson section, we're going to do the, um, a Q&A &A after that, and then we'll wrap things up. So, over to you, over to you, you Isaac. Thanks, Thanks uh, no so problem. My name is Isaac, I'm just going to Sorry, make sure that you know, we don't get in trouble up here in the discussions. Uh, we don't get a bit passionate, but it's, uh, I think Access UK have done very well to bring this to the fore. It's very important. We've done uh, quite a few of this uh, early in the year. But we're just going to play this video quickly, and I'll put the questions out to the panel. Uh, Please give your personal opinions uh, as best you can, and obviously we'll put it out to the uh, audience as well. And let me say something to you gangster rappers. Let me deal with this. I gotta say something to the gangster rappers. I know a lot of y'all support me, y'all text me, y'all show me love, but I got to say something to y'all Negroes. And I ain't talking to all of you, but most of you. Now those of y'all who come with a balanced album, I'ma grant you a little bit of a respite, because at least, you got an A side full of garbage, but you got a B side full of positivity. So at least you trying. I'm going to work with y'all. I'm going to work with y'all. But you Negroes who got 12, 15, 16 albums of gangsterism, selling dope, sexually exploiting black women, going to jail, worshiping European materialism, you Negroes ain't nothing more than a modern day Uncle Tom Uncle Remus, buck dancing coon ass, worshiping materialism, got our kids strung out on cars and clothes. You Negroes ain't nothing but a modern Sambo ass. Sit your ass down. <laughs> right. Right. 
so it's 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 clear that he hasn't left any room for interpretation in what he's trying to say. So I think uh, you know, uh, Rasbet wants to say something about this. You want to kick it off? Yeah, yeah I'll kick it off still. Um, yeah. So is there anyone that like in here that fully agrees with what he's saying, like full heartedly delivery everything? I like this. <coughs> so basically, yeah, that's I feel like my first thing is like this because there's so much truth in what he's saying and I feel like he, there's a lot of the things that he's saying that that there's rappers I'm sure there's rappers on here that they would embrace innit but you can't talk to the man like that firstly innit you know what I'm saying so when you're trying to get your your, your point across you got to know how you're speaking to the demographic you're speaking to innit I feel like that's 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 something that came up with me and I'm, I'm a person I'm the first person that's brought Umar Johnson to this country you get me first youth organisation and that. Another thing is, the, the question that was going to follow, is there anyone who agrees with him, is do you support conscious rappers? Do you get me? Because, all right, cool, I hear you. You're getting all the gangster rappers, but go into his Instagram and you're not going to see him promoting any conscious rappers. You get me? I performed in front of him. He didn't ask me about my CD. Tariq Nasheed, the maker of Hidden Colours, promoted my CD, but my brother, who I brought over, he's never said nothing about my music. So why are you talking about the gangster rappers? Do you know what I'm saying, fam? And I'm not, I'm not no conscious rapper, I'm a revolutionary rapper. So I do believe that there's stuff that he said, you get me, that is truthful. But I know for a fact that man like um, certain man on the panel, like Young Spray, when they killed Duggan, he made a tune, you get me? And, that, and that's, 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 that's the stuff that we need, you get me? And Scraps, before you go... No, I'm not going to Oh, okay, yeah. One thing about Scraps, you get me? I was listening to a tune one time, and he said, if I was born back then, I'd be a pamphlet. Now, for... For a lot of people, that's just one bar. But for the mandem in here that know Wagwan, when you heard that bar, you knew Wagwan. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's a thing where man, man's not trying to preach. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's what I'm trying to say in it. It's not a preachy thing, innit? You can't, you're not going to get through to, to, to the people that I, I was raised with, innit? And like, with preaching, that's, they're going to turn off straight away, innit? You get me? So I'm, my, my main thing is with this whole um, rap and that, we've got to study the people that have, like, you can't judge none of them and them here. Because the fact is, the, 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 there's record labels and there's DJs, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and they control the narrative, you know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, if you ask most of the rappers on this thing, if they started talking about, I don't know, the Libya thing, if they made that their, their, their next track, do they, do they feel like it's going to do the same numbers as a track where they're just talking about their life, fam? Because that's another thing. The man them are just journalists. You know what I'm saying? But my thing is, when we're, when we're doing the journalism, let's be real, innit? Let's be real. So, okay, we, we talked about the straps and we talked about the food, but can we talk about our brothers doing life as well, though? And how much we wish they was at it? Can we talk about the ones we lost and what we would do to give them back? Because I know, I, know, um, I, know, I know we have these feelings as well. And I feel like that's, that's, that's the main thing. It's not about man them being conscious. Because I don't feel like... I feel like the conscious thing's been tainted in a way that's preachy, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like we can be real. I feel like Stannerman's a very good example of that, you know what I'm saying? If you know about Stannerman, Stannerman's a banger, you get me, from Leighton, you know what I'm saying? And he spits about crud, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, he'll give you another side of the story, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like my thing when I was growing up, the things that made me like love myself when I heard Swiss cry, you get me? That was, a, that was a big thing for me, when Bashi made black words, that was a big thing for all of us. If it wasn't, then I don't know, you get me, like, you know what I'm saying? So, but do, you, do, you not feel, do you not feel that he's uh, appealing to a mass audience who will agree with what he's saying? Who? Uh, Uber Johnson. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, you on, can on, sell the man the map, but I'm saying that we're the warrior class though. So the minute you, you lose us, you lose everything anyway. Fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because we're the warrior class. When they so, killed so, Duggan, so has got an opinion when they killed Duggan, who was out there, fam? Yeah, has everybody else got an opinion? Alright, listen to this now, yeah? Hello everyone, thanks for coming, we appreciate it because it's very cold out there. I nearly never made it myself. Yeah. But um, I hear what you're saying, everyone's entitled to their own opinion and that. But we have to also remember, this guy is in America, he's talking to Americans. This is England. Trust. This is UK, it's different over here. But anyway, we're more real over here, to me anyway, yeah? So it's like, okay, how can I put this? A couple things he say might be true. But it's that you could say that about all other, all other things like computer games. Like I got my youth robbing a bank and all that. He's nine years old. He's coming telling me he's robbing a bank. I had to tell him he can't play that no more. Like they've got computer games that's 
even worse than what I'm saying or what. And as far as with music with me, it saved my life because I could have been next door to my brothers doing 30 years in prisons where I've um, learned to rap or whatever. And when I came out, I stuck to it and that stopped me from going in and out of jail. Um, when I've gone back to jail, there's like the whole wing on the exercise yard spitting now. There's people coming out and trying to do music. They're trying to change their life. So there's good, there's good um, points to it as well. Okay. But okay. yeah, all we're doing is just spitting about our life, really. But yeah, I hear that because some people, obviously you've got some chiefs that will just take up the thing and think, yeah, today I'm going to be spray, today I'm going to be... But we can't help that. That's your parents that's got to help that. You get what I'm trying to say? When I was going to school listening to Snoop, Doggy dog or whatever, and telling my mum is something else. That's not, do you get what I'm saying? My mum that had to get on me, look after me, and rare, rare, you get what I'm saying? So, yes. okay. it's not That's just down to. Um, it's a fair point, scratch your head. Come this before you were freely. I just believe like there's negative and positive messages in like all genres of music, and it just depends on what like the individual wants to take from it, kind of thing. It's not forced upon no one that. Once you listen to this kind of music, this is how you must live your life or whatever. Sure. Society can kind of form that harder than music, like your area where you grow up, who you're around, like space and things that you see on TV and all of that. There's a lot of things involved in that, not just the music, in it. But then you can listen to a Beyonce or a Rihanna track, and they're promoting certain negativity for the younger generation of females, in it. But no one's not saying nothing about that. It just depends on what the individual themselves wants to take from the music. You know? Sure, but you know, just just to be sorry, just to be uh, a devil's advocate, for whatever better word, there's a lot of people who are uh, they look at musicians as God, God's advocate. God's advocate. I do apologise. Uh, there are a lot of people who are looking at artists as the mantra, so they would literally follow whatever they do. What do you say to that group of people? Because you're saying it's about what you take out of it, but a large portion of people are taking the negative out of it. So how do we, how do we then say That's, what we're doing? That depends on your mind state, like how strong or how weak your mind is in it. Because music shouldn't be able to like dictate how your life's going to go. That's it shouldn't. Unfortunately, yeah. it does, though. So, in some so cases. Gig said something here. Gig said, if I was living in Disneyland, I'd be spitting about Mickey Mouse. But right now, I'm in the norm. So where I am, I'm going to spit about because you're a product of your environment, innit? And these are the journalists from our from our neighbourhoods. If if these lot don't if, if if the man them don't spit about what's happening in the block, how do, how would we know that there's that, that there, there's work to be done in that area? We wouldn't know, innit? Because they're the journalists, innit? So my main thing is, yeah, instead of talking to the man them, sure. like if, if 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 Giggs grew up and he saw a group of these people who want to see this change in their community, trying to help out, trying to offered trying to find ways to get jobs and all of that yeah. then he would have spat about that in a bar and you would have heard that in it but but our community hasn't managed to do that we just flap our lips about about the youth you get me but we but we don't we won't go out there and actually change the actual situation so that's what gangs about in it we're about we're about mobilizing and actually rolling out to the communities you know what i'm saying so so my main question to the people that say it's the rappers what what was columbus listening to what was christopher columbus listening to when they went and genocided the native americans what does Ter Theresa May listen to when she let Grenfell burn down? What did Hitler listen to? Probably some classical music. Do you know what I'm saying, fam? So my, my main thing is, if you want to talk about the rappers, all right, cool, cool, let's talk about the rappers, but then let's talk about the movies as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and not just the gangster movies, movies like Alien and Predator where your heads are getting ripped off and all of that. <laughs> let's talk about movies like The Purge, when there's a real purge going on in our communities. Yeah, Duggan, Edson, Ration, if you want names, yeah? Rest and the, what, the, the main thing I'm saying to the mandem is, yeah, you see what they're trying to do, yeah? They're trying to demoralise our life, though. So they're trying to say these lot are just criminals, so when we get shot dead, it's, it's nothing. But that's, that, that's, that's not the case, fam. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like we need to tell the other side of the story where that's concerned, because that, then that's what I'm trying to fight. You understand? Because they're trying to demoralise our lives. But that's what I'm saying. Go to the movies and tell me what Christopher Columbus was listening to and then you can judge the man in a minute. That's a fair point. Thank you for that point. I appreciate that. Sir, would you like to uh, come in and uh, offer an opinion as well? In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, whether we say Allah, whether we say God, Jah, Jehovah, Yahweh, and many, many names that human beings use to describe the creator of the heavens and the earth. I want to greet you in the greeting words of peace. We say it in the ancient tongue of Arabic. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, 
that's the spirit in which I sit before you in the spirit of peace. Um, there's so much that could be said about this. But suffice to say this, it's really, really important that we understand the science in this. The subconscious mind cannot distinguish between fantasy and reality. That's why when you walk into the cinema, consciously you know it's just a movie. Within eight minutes and 20 seconds of the film starting, you're into the plot and you believe everything that you see on the screen is real. There's a scripture that says, as a man thinketh, so is he. The thinking is what's being affected by the music. Whether we like it or not, as uh, Brother Raspek said, it's not all negative and we, we appreciate that. And Umar Johnson also echoed that. There's good music out there. The, the thing that's the best about the music quite often is the beat. Because as an African people, as a black people, our nature is that drum. And we get uh, drawn in by the beat of the music and that drives it. Unfortunately, when you put negative lyrics, filthy lyrics about women, and you start talking about guns and drugs and this becomes a mantra or a chant, because this is what happens with music. Music is something that we repeat, we sing it, we go over it and over it. Whatever, you got to understand that when you listen to music, it's an emotional thing. And whenever you are emotional, whatever it is that you feed on, it becomes a part of you. Especially, by the way, being black people. Because being a black man or a black woman, we are absorbers of energy. Everything we see, everything we hear becomes a part of us. So this is why you have to be very, very careful about what it is that you are continuously listening to because it does influence your life. Let me, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny, but I've got to tell you, you see, some Jamaicans went into the cinema in Jamaica and they watched a, a Western. And you've got to understand that by the end of the film, You've got man coming out saying, Minium Josie Wheels, Arminium Clint Eastwood, because of the influence of the Western. This is our influence. When late night Kung Fu came out in this country, as black young men going into the cinema, we walked in. At the end of the film, we flew out doing a sidekick because we are influenced by everything we see and everything we hear. This is why we cannot take this thing as a lightweight thing. This is heavy duty stuff. I was just listening to the radio the other day and I heard, uh, I heard Sligo G, right? You see me? Stylo. Stylo. You see me? And then I was listening, I heard um, this other tune that was on Kiss, I think it was. You know, like mainstream stuff. And it was, um, I want to die. Uh, I think Logic, Logic 1-800 or something like that. I want to die. Listen, let me tell you something, man. Our youth today are being programmed for death. These executives in the music industry, they know what they are doing by promoting a certain type of music, a certain type of mantra, which is influencing our youth on the street. These killings, these stabbings, these shootings, they are not by accident, they are by design. And unfortunately, as black people living in the UK, most of us are in denial. Most of us don't want to know about the reality of our history and how we were systematically destroyed over 400 years. And in that destruction, we have never ever had anything to address the destruction. What we've had on top of the destruction is miseducation. Everything we know today came from our open enemy. All of the school systems that we went to, it was our open enemy, the slave master and his children who have taught black people everything we live today. And so we may think this is us, but it ain't us. We are a people who are literally 
out of our minds. And until we are prepared, hear me well, family, because I didn't really come here today to play, because whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, as a people going beyond, going deeper and beyond the 21st century, going into 2018 and beyond, we are in deep, deep doo-doo. I want you to hear me. Black people are in for the worst beating. I mean, I think you think back in the day was bad. There's stuff coming now that they are planning for us. Because we refuse. Hear me. We are the only people in the country who refuse to do what other people take for granted. And you know what that is? There is no unity. There is no unity. We refuse. I'm a Muslim. Next man is a Christian. Next man is a Rasta. Next, and we're all these stupid divisional lines, not realizing that we are brothers and sisters, that we are family. We all come from the same place in that continent of Africa. We were ripped out, taken to different parts of the world, Caribbean, Brazil, North America, Isles of the Pacific, destroyed as a human reality. But nobody is interested in looking at that reality and determining that that has to be repaired. And nobody ain't going to repair it for us but us. And it comes down to an education that is black-centric, Afrocentric, an education that produces black power. But most black men today and black people today, we are scared to death of black power. We don't want to, oh, this sounds like reverse racism. Let me tell you something. We are up against power in this world. And these powers are highly organized. And they are about the, not past genocide, future genocide of black people. And until we unite and come together and start to demonstrate some real black power, unapologetic, and we get some black men who are willing to be soldiers, Soldiers. Yeah, and, and, and the, this gender, the youth, they're, they're kind of ready, but they need guidance. But we, we, most of us are scared of the youth. We won't even go into the hood and talk to the young people. Now we see them and we just walk past and we're frightened. But that's our youth. And remember, because those who want to blame the youth, the fruit don't fall, fall from the tree. And those of us who are parents, we're responsible. We're responsible. For whatever they're doing today, we're responsible. Until we take, retake our responsibility, this thing will continue. I could go on for yeah, three you, days you, talking you, like you this. Definitely, you definitely can. I appreciate it.